Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. July 29, 2020, the ComEd is in trouble again edition. First up, from the Sydney Morning Herald, a Australian man was charged with bribing a Malaysian official in order to secure the sale of a $22 million apartment complex in Melbourne's southeast side. The uh, person, Dennis Teen, was charged with bribing a foreign official in four counts of false accounting relating to the sale of property. The charges come after an investigation revealed the price had been allegedly inflated uh, to provide kickbacks to a group of Malaysian officials. Uh, we have another, uh, unfortunately, case out of Australia. The disgraced bank Westpac says that, in a report in The Guardian, that an additional 450,000 AML and counterterrorism breaches have been identified beyond the existing 23 million breaches that are already being litigated. Westpac has already admitted uh, breaching the law, and it revolves around customers who are sending money to the Philippines uh, in a way consistent with paying for child exploitation. The newly discovered potential breaches relate to a different reporting rule requiring the banks uh, to notify the government in any transaction excess of $10,000. Uh, in May, uh, Westpac said it failed to report between 60 and 90,000 of such transactions. But on Tuesday, it said it was another 450,000. So uh, a bank, uh, no doubt, in the uh, spirit of Deutsche Bank, uh, would put profits before everything else, certainly doing business ethically and in compliance and even in compliance with the laws of Australia. So we'll continue to watch that story. Next up, the uh, ComEd continues to have uh, battles as now it's being hit by a massive uh, class action suit involving its bribery charges. Customers are demanding that they be reimbursed at least $150 million for the benefits utilities gleaned from the scheme. Uh, The suit (coughs) filed uh, this week will not interfere uh, with the deferred prosecution agreement, although the, the a uh, company wants to uh, put it off until then. Uh, that probably is not going to work. Uh, the fine cannot be raised through rate hikes, according to the term of the DPA. The corruption costs ComEd uh, customers and businesses in Illinois far too much for too long, said the plaintiff's lawyer, and it's important that the company come clean. This type of follow-on litigation is not unusual, but it will dramatically increase the cost of ComEd Uh, which paid a $200 million fine previously on this matter. And finally, the disgraced and scandal hit South African retailer Steinhoff International said on Monday it was proposing a settlement of worth up to $1 billion to settle a stream of legal claims against the company. As reported by cash, the value would be paid in cash and shares if the settlement is given the consent. This is for the company's massive uh, bribery and corruption scandal in South Africa. And once again, demonstrating the cost of uh, such a matter is uh, not limited at all to the fine and penalty. And with this proposed settlement of the class of individuals, it could be uh, just a part of an overall fine and penalty. One of the clear themes from today's news is uh, when you uh, partner with ComEd that the fine and penalty is only a, a small part because we haven't even gotten to the investigative costs and monitoring and remediation costs. So corruption costs. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Daily Compliance News, which is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. 